So in the last lecture, we investigated this innocent looking model or system, which was a ball bouncing on a surface. And we saw something rather strange there, which was that the, the ball ended up bouncing an infinite number of times in finite time. And this is part of another potential complication that comes from hybridizing your model, namely that you have these kinds of infinitely many switches. And this is known as the Zeno phenomenon. And in today's lecture, we're going to dig a little deeper into the, the Zeno phenomenon and see what we can do about it and if we can understand it. But fundamentally, what I would like to point out is that Zeno is bad because if you're actually running something that's asked to do an infinite amount of things in finite time, it crashes. If you're running this on a computer, the simulations crash. Uh, another thing is that we know that there is something inaccurate or wrong with our model because the ball, if I drop a ball, it doesn't bounce an infinite number of times. It bounces 17 times and then it stops bouncing. So there's something wrong with our model. That's another warning flag. And the third warning flag is that we don't actually know what the system does beyond the, the Zeno point, meaning the time up to which we have an infinite number of switches. So since we can't really define what the system is doing beyond that point, things like asymptotic stability is meaningless because time is not allowed to really progress off to infinity. So first of all, why is it called the Zeno phenomenon? Well, there was a Greek philosopher, Zeno, Zeno of Elea, uh, who spent a lot of time thinking about movement and a dynamic world. And basically his point was that our uh, perception of the world is wrong because clearly there are all these problems out there. For instance, here's one of his famous paradoxes. We have a hare racing a tortoise. And the tortoise is a little slower, so the tortoise gets a head start. In fact, the tortoise starts there. And then the race is on. And at some point, the hare reaches the point where the tortoise started from. But at that point, right, the tortoise has moved. Not much, but it has moved a little bit. This is how far the tortoise has moved. OK, the race goes on. And at some point, the hare catches up to where the tortoise was last time. But now the tortoise has moved a little bit more. Not much. And then this repeats. In fact, here is the, the paradox. The paradox is that the hare never catches up with the tortoise because every time it reaches the step the tortoise was last time, the tortoise will have moved a tiny bit. Now, mathematically, this is nothing. We know now about convergence series. We know that even though there are infinitely many of these small intervals, uh, the sum of them will converge. And there is indeed a point where the hare will catch the tortoise. Uh, but the problem for us is that if I model this as a hybrid system, I have, again, infinitely many switches in finite time. So this is why this kind of infinitely many switches is called the Zeno phenomenon, because it can be traced back to Zeno's many paradoxes about motion. Now, let's look at another example, one that's not a hare and a, a tortoise, but one that's rather innocent looking. Let's say that x dot is negative for positive x, minus 1, and it's positive for uh, negative x. OK, so we have this if I write this as a, uh, as a hybrid automaton. So let's see what's going on there. If I draw this little plot here, right, here, is, uh, here is time and here is x. Let's say that x starts there. Well, it starts positive, so x dot is going to be negative 1. So it's going to decay down with a slope of negative 1. And then it becomes tiny but negative, And then oh, it's going to switch back up to plus, and then it goes up, and in the second it becomes just a tiny bit positive again, it switches down. And in fact, really what's happening is that once it hits zero, it starts switching like crazy here. In practice, it would chatter, but in theory, it starts switching like crazy here. And this is actually not good at all. So this is really a super Zeno phenomenon, because not only do we have infinitely many switches, in finite time. We have it at a single time instance, which is when the system uh, actually hits x equal to 0. So for that reason, we typically talk about two different kinds of Zeno types. To, so type 1 Zeno, which is what I now call the z super Zeno, it says that you get infinitely many switches in a single time instant. In this case, Again, I want to reiterate this. The ball came down here, and then, not the ball, this system came down here, and then it started switching infinitely many times right there. Now, type 2 is 
Xeno, but not type 1, meaning you have infinitely many switches, but you have that over a time interval. And the bouncing ball is really uh, an example of that. So there are some good news and bad news in all this rather uh, messy switching situation. The bad news is that Xeno is a problem, as we've seen. However, type 1, which is arguably the more common type, is not only detectable, I meaning it's easy to see if you're going to end up in a situation where you're going to switch uh, infinitely many times at a single time instant. But the other good news about type 1 is that we can actually deal with it. Because, you know what, what should this system do? It should go down to zero, and then it should stay at zero. Right? It's clear that that's what we want the system to do, and in fact, you can do that, uh, as we will see uh, in the next lecture. Now, the last piece of bad news, though, is that type 2, the bouncing ball type, that is hard. It's hard to deal with the bouncing ball. It's hard to detect it. it hard, it's hard to remedy it. Uh, and this is, again, a situation where you really need to test your system and see, do I get something like this where you start seeing an accumulation of switch times? And if you do, you need to go back and revisit your model. But in the next lecture, we will see how to indeed overcome the, the problems that a type 1 Xeno system will, uh, will cause us.